Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. This is a message not just to our opponents, but to those who support me as well, that we will need to come together in a few months and unite this party and this nation because the right-wing Republicans we oppose must not be allowed to gain the presidency. You're actually listening to the actual voice of Joseph Stalin, who is uh, Bernie Sanders' grandfather. And what Stalin said is astounding. Because the rhetoric of Stalin and Lenin, when you actually study their speeches as I do, is eerily similar to that of Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. But you don't know that. You're interested in the A's versus the B's, the C's versus the D's, the knuckleheads versus the knockworst heads, which degenerate sang what at what sporting event. But Stalin's election speech said the forthcoming elections are not merely elections, comrades. They are really a national holiday of our workers our intelligentsia. Never in the history of the world have there been such really free and really democratic elections, he said. History knows of no other example like it. The point is not that our elections will be universal, equal, secret, and direct, although the fact is of great importance. No, my comrades, he said, the point is that they will be carried out as the freest elections and the most democratic of any country in the world. Now, of course, He was lying about everything, just as Hillary lies about everything, just as Sanders hides his communist background. They are absolute revolutionaries. Welcome to the Savage Nation. The theme of today's show, actually the title of today's show, is Revolution Comes to America. And the reason I say revolution comes to America is because the soul of America is plainly up for grabs. Trump represents America's hope. The Democratic Party, whoever it may be, the corrupt Hillary or the psychotic communist Bernie. In either case, those two represent the communist revolution. You say, oh, don't be crazy. Oh, no. Study the history of communism and see how first they said we'd bring about socialism, which eventually will become communism. When Bernie holds up his fist in a black power salute and says this is a revolution, and he has been a lifetime street agitator, communist revolutionary, for his entire sick life, What do you think he intends to do? What do you think will follow if, God forbid, this psychotic street radical wins? Would you like to see Al Sharpton as attorney general? Would you like to see the Black Panther Party running the U.S. military? Shall I go down the list of what might happen after they seize your guns and they release the thugs in Black Lives Matter upon the streets of America, having armed them as their private army? Now you say this is crazy and you're getting carried away. Oh, really? That's why I've been wrong for 21 years. That's why I've survived in the most competitive industry in the, in the world for 21 years. Listen to me very carefully. Even though Obama will be out of power, he will wield power behind the scenes because he has been a revolutionary for these eight years. What I love about these speeches from Sanders and Hillary, uh, they're acting as though there's a Republican right-wing government running America when we've had a radical, psychotic left-wing government for eight straight years that's decimated this nation from top to bottom. Oh, I know the rich have never been richer. And that's the paradox. You say, how can that be? How can Obama be a socialist if the rich have never been richer? Well, in order to understand the answer to that question, you have to know a little bit about history. And I'll give you a little of the history today because there have been many examples of dictators who have made certain that the richest people in their nation became richer under them. Hitler did it. How did Hitler maintain his power in the early years when he didn't have absolute power? He only won 33% of the vote when he took over the Reichstag. He made certain that the industrialists of his time, the Krupp steel fortune who manufactured weapons and others, would get giant government contracts to rebuild the German military. Does it sound familiar? How does Google, 
How does Microsoft, how do these gigantic firms like Facebook get away with triple Dutch tax dodges? How? Because Obama lets them get away with it. Now, why does Obama let Google and Microsoft and uh, the others get away with these tax dodges while complaining about inequality? I'll let you figure that one out. Just don't lose the ball. The ball is the communist, or shall I say the revolution is here in America. And the soul of America is up for grabs. Last night as I watched the victory speeches, certain uh, things struck me as very, very clear. Hillary is out of her mind. She gave a victory speech rather than a concession speech. There was no concession in the mad woman's speech. She made believe she won when she clearly got decimated last night. Did you see her? Did you see the speech as though she had been a victor? And then I saw the stage with uh, the Trump family. And I said, Camelot is back. That's right. That's what I said to a very good friend. He was stunned by it. I said, America finally has a choice. I said, even liberals understand that with the Trump family, America will be back. That Camelot is back. And you have a clear choice here. You want a street radical with a dirty suit like Bernie Sanders? Or do you want Camelot? Do you want America to be alive again? where people can walk with their heads up again. You know, I have a friend from England who just came over here this last weekend. And he said, you should see what's going on in England right now. He said, in London, people walk with their heads down. Everyone's defeated. Did you know that? Why don't you walk around your city today in New York? Walk around in San Francisco. Walk around in Dallas. Walk around in Phoenix. Walk around in Chicago. Walk around in Miami. And tell me people are walking around with their heads held high. They're not. They're walking around keeping their heads as close as they can to their shoulders because they are afraid. They're very afraid from what this man has unleashed upon this society. He has turned street thugs into victims at the same time he has turned the police into a neutral force. This devil in the White House has neutralized the police and has unleashed the street thugs on American society. And this is just the beginning. It's step number one. It is step number one of the revolution that has arrived in America. Now, I want to tell you something about communism, since many of you heard it, you don't know what it really means. You can find it yourself by reading the Communist Manifesto, which was an 1848 political pamphlet written by Karl Marx and Frederick Engels. I read it in college. I had to read Marx and Engels in college. And it was published originally in London, in the German language, as the Manifest der Communistischen Partei. And this was written just as the revolutions of 1848 began to erupt. And what it is is an analytical approach to the class struggle and the problems of capitalism and the capitalist mode of production. Now, what does that actually mean? It means nothing. Marx and Engels were two idiots. They were two spoiled, rotten, rich kids who didn't like other rich people. And they came up with an ideal world of uh, an ideal view of the world where the peasants who were working in the factories and on the f farms would own the factories and the farms. And at that time, everyone would have a wonderful life, these morons thought, the same way the trust funders on Pacific Heights think that the world will be great with the communist revolution as they walk around with uh, Black Panther, Black Power fist bumps, the white kids coming down off Pacific Heights, coming off a heroin high. But I'm getting distracted, and I don't want you to get distracted. How has that ever worked out when the peasants ran the factories? Has it ever worked out real well? I'm going to give you a microcosm, a little example of it. In Berkeley, California, there was once a, in the 1970s, there was a fervor after the 60s of, uh, for revolution. They opened up a big grocery store called the Co-op. In Cambridge, Massachusetts, again, the lame brain idiots at Harvard, wanted communism. They wanted the workers, the supermarket clerks, to own the market. They opened up a co-op. How did the co-ops work out? Well, they didn't. They went out of business. Do you know why they went out of business? Because the workers couldn't manage the supermarkets. Moreover, the thievery was at an all-time high, just as it is in salad bars today from all of the left-wingers in this country who think it's their right to steal vegetables out of a salad bar because man... They're ripping us off for that lettuce. I'll take some of my own. I'll stick my hand right in there. Well, you get the picture. So what does this have to do with last night? It has everything to do with last night. It has to do with the fact that Bernie Sanders is using the rhetoric 
of socialism slash communism, and he's resonating with the uneducated, pot-smoking morons amongst the youth. And Clinton, of course, is completely out of the box. She's out of touch with reality. You may as well say she's finished. You'd say she's finished if she didn't steal the election. But there are indications owing to what occurred with the, with the uh, delegate count. Did you see that story yet? That even though she lost, she had the very same number of delegates as the communist uh, on the left? You didn't see that one. How did that happen? Well, look into it. You may find uh, something that you're uh, not knowledgeable about. Then we have on the other side Trump and his victory speech, and there was something very notable about it, and that was this. For the last several days, especially yesterday, I, Michael Savage, have been talking about the opiate problem in New Hampshire. Remember that? Nobody talked about it until I raised the issue five weeks ago. One of the most important things that Trump said last night can be heard in clip number one. For the people of New Hampshire, where you have a tremendous problem with heroin and drugs, you wouldn't even believe it. You see this place and you say it's so beautiful. You have a tremendous problem. The first thing always that they mention to me, Mr. Trump, please do something. The drugs, the heroin, it's pouring in and it's so cheap because there's so much of it. And the kids are getting stuck and other people are getting stuck. We're going to end it. We're going to end it. We're going to end it at the southern border. It's going to be over. Did you hear what Trump said? He knows where the drugs are coming from. The southern border. That means Mexico. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Bush, for the super highways. Thank you, Bill Clinton, for NAFTA. Thank you for the trucks that can't be inspected by the Border Patrol. Now you understand why both parties don't want Donald Trump. And now you understand why the left hates Donald Trump. They want their drugs. At the same time this is going on, Lenin's Pope is set to arrive in Mexico on Friday for an agitation, a six-day visit, that will conclude with this meddler standing on the U.S. border to show solidarity with the illegal alien invaders trying to cross it. This man should be deported if he arrives in America again. And I'll tell you who brought him in last time, that shameful John Boehner, who said it was the greatest thing he ever did, was bringing the Pope to America. This is astounding to me that you would let a politician act as a religious man someone wrote this obama has a willing accomplice in overthrowing our government and way of life he means the pope and then he wrote this pope francis you are not welcome outside the vatican and any catholic who would support your political worldview should denounce him now even christ said my kingdom is not of this world apparently francis does not take the word of god as infallible only himself and as I've said in my book, Government Zero, he is Lenin's pope through and through. First, he tried to be a genius on climate change. He was totally wrong on that. And now he plans to show up at the border masquerading as an illegal alien from Mexico. The pope should be sitting in jail for his crimes against children worldwide. That's my opinion. Secondly, he's a hypocrite of the highest order. He is the epitome of the word hypocrite. When well, the day the Vatican sells off its art, and gives the money to the poor. Or the day the Vatican opens up its borders and lets the poor pour in from Iraq and Syria is the day I'll believe a word that comes out of this Catholic Church under Pope Francis, Lenin's Pope. So as you see, my friends, I'm not so wrong when I say revolution comes to America. It's coming from Sanders and Clinton. It's coming from the Catholic Church. But it's not coming from Michael Savage. We are going to stop this revolution. We are going to save America together. We are not going to sit here passively wringing our hands. And if the time comes, I'm going to make a commitment to you right now. We will be in the streets and we will stop them. Did you hear what I just said? I will not die on this earth and leave this country in ruins for my granddaughter to inherit a wreckage because you were too cowardly to stand up for what you believe. All of you listen to me very carefully. You may think that you can just listen to radio or read a newspaper, or read a blog, and stop this. You are wrong. You're going to have to put yourself out there. You're going to have to do what they're doing in Europe to stand up to these communists, or you're not going to have a nation. And if you think you're immune because you're not a rich person, you're crazy. Because first they came for the rich, but you were not rich, and you did not stand up for the rich. And then they came for the middle class, but you didn't stand up for the middle class,